All right, welcome back. It's uh, yeah, the start of November now. The work to prepare the the land is is ongoing, and thought I'd just come down today and just see what was what's been happening. There's um ditches going in here so we've been we tried to do as minimal ditches as possible uh they're just along uh some of the new tracks we're we're creating uh, and that's basically to make sure that the tracks remain quite dry because most of the tracks we're putting in uh, are just going to be grass paths for quite a long time so the ditching here is to, to try and keep the water uh, off the tracks because obviously if we're driving up and down the tracks then don't want to get too wet okay so this is the old gateway between the two top fields uh, the gates gates gone uh, obviously and um, just to show the ditches here the was uh, so because it goes through and it goes actually goes down a little bit that means we've had to dig one ditch which we weren't expecting wow well, we hadn't we thought it was just going to soak away so we wind a bit so you've got the ditches that come down so this is where the track's going to go up the hill here and then there's another track going to turn right and go up there these are just grass paths to start with uh, and then the water comes down here but then it goes uphill there back to the sycamore trees over there so we've had to put a ditch down here uh, and the other day when it rained a lot uh, <laughs> they were quite worried about it's all going to flood around here so we have to dig a, a new a ditch down down oh, I'm going down here uh, and then it goes into the wood so yeah that's we like I said we really didn't want to dig as many ditches because it's not it's not really what you want to do but the trackways uh definitely need ditches otherwise it's just going to become a, like a mess uh right let's go and then, right so now let's get on to something more interesting this is the well <laughs> i say interesting yeah the mound so you can see there's uh there's been more mounding activity uh and they seem to have done most of uh up here now as well which is good news so uh, maybe I would say, so we've got, it's uh, 60, what are we doing, 60 or 1,000 trees for planting. Uh, so that's 60,000 mounds. So I think they've probably done just over half an hour, I'd guess. So the, we had a couple of small issues. So the, because we're not planting them in lines, it's quite a bit harder to get the right spacing. So we need so many mounds per hectare. And uh, it's, you know, it's the, the op op machine digger operators. They just got to use their eye and get a feeling for it. Uh, and there was a bit, uh, it was a bit off to start with. The other thing you might notice, although maybe I should take some, maybe I can get some overhead shots. So some of these, you can see these ones here are only one meter apart so this is a cluster and in this cluster we're going to be putting oak uh, and then around the oak clusters the spacing is is higher uh or sorry the spacing the space between is higher uh, the density is less and that's where we're going to put the, the cherry and the silver birch so the reason for doing the oak closer together is because of the grant system. Uh, we could go into much detail about that, but we basically have to plant the oak closer together and we have to, we're not allowed to mix it, uh, what do you call it, intimate mix, where it's like every alternate one is a different tree. We've got to plant groups of at least 25 of the oak. So that was uh, a little bit disappointing with being so restrictive, but you know, it's, it's a good way of testing. So like I said, here it's one meter spacing, the oak. 
and we've gone for that because because it's a bit more exposed to we thought it was potentially better to plant them even closer together than we needed to uh, which is costing us a bit more but hopefully we'll see the benefits of those uh, in the long run whereas further down in the quarry field where it's more sheltered we can plant a bit further apart so it's 1.7 meters which is technically the minimum density we have to do for the grand uh, scheme so it's uh yeah watch this we'll come back in uh Ten years time and see how it's how see if we can compare the two and see uh, which ones are, are working out better. Uh, hopefully they're both working out well because it's slightly different conditions. So I thought I'd just talk a bit more about densities actually. So density that's to how many how close the trees are being planted together. So in the conifer areas we're planting at 2,700 trees per hectare and that's a bit of the grant so in terms of the grant we have to plant at least two and a half thousand trees per hectare. And we decided to plant a few more just because if a few die we don't have to go in and replant those areas whereas if uh, you plant two and a half thousand and some die you have to go in and replant because the two and a half you need to maintain that uh, number for so many years. I can't remember how many years it is, maybe 10, 10 years? Yeah, at least 10 years, I think. So if they obviously die in the first couple of years and you're only planting two and a half thousand, you go in and plant some more. And the broadleaf areas, we're mainly planting at 3,000. Oh no, hang on, what am I saying? 3,100. Is it 3,001? <laughs> oh no. I've, uh, it's, it's a bit more. Uh, it's the oak, which is going to be 3,100. So we're planting those generally a little bit, well, we're planting those a bit higher as well. Except these uh, oak areas uh, up here where we're planting one meter spacing, which is actually 10,000 per hectare, but that's because of what I was already talking about. And here you can see, clearly see, these are like the oak clusters and they haven't yet done uh, the other spacing, the other mounds in between these yet. So we can really see how, how it's looking. Uh, you can see another one here and one here. So what this basically means is the the spacing between the groups of oaks, uh, you're you're only going to get one mature tree out of that spacing, uh, and the spacing should mean that there'll be one mature oak here, one mature oak down here, one of that one over there. So it's the right spacing that in 80 years time. 60 to well 60 probably onwards maybe maybe earlier uh you'll only get one mature oak out of each of these patches so out of the 25 trees you plant only one is gonna actually make it to being uh, a big old oak tree so that's gonna be hard <laughs> having to cut down uh, uh all these trees uh and these ones because they are so close together they will probably have to cut cut them out quite early on in life uh, whereas obviously we've got bigger spacing you can generally leave them a bit longer uh, and those ones we cut down in here this areas um you know all the other all the conifers and all the other broadleaves there'll probably be some value in the timber that we take out but when the oaks are so close together in these groups it's likely i don't know i don't actually know exactly when so don't quote me but i would have thought probably in 10 to 15 years time we we're gonna have to cut most out and then maybe we can leave two or three until 20 30 years maybe 40 years right so that was a bit more about the spacing uh the only i think to say about the spacing is in the in the purely native areas where we're not going to be taking any timber out of we're only doing a density of 1100 there so you can see that's quite a big difference and that's basically to allow we can allow some more smaller open areas in those areas to make it a bit more of uh, the extra benefits you get to biodiversity is you're having smaller clearings uh, in your woodland um so yeah that's a brief summary of the density all right that's it for this week if you're enjoying following along don't forget to subscribe to the channel and i'll catch you in the next video